let's take a look at the redox reaction and the balancing of half equation. Typically, it involves a reactant that reduces and another reactant that oxidizes. In this case, manganate's oxidation state reduces from plus 7 to plus 2. In the case of sulfur, increases from plus 6 to plus 4. So the first step that is required to balance the equation is first to balance the atom whose oxidation state has increased or decreased. So in this case, Mn need to be balanced. So you can put one on both sides. In the case of uh, sulfide going to sulfate, the sulfur needs to be balanced. So again, we put one on both sides. Thereafter, in the second step, we will add water followed by H plus to balance the hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Let's take a look at manganate going to manganese. In this case, manganate has four oxygen. So we need to put four water molecules to balance the oxygen first. And thereafter, to add the AH plus to balance the hydrogen and oxygen. In the case of sulfide, sulfide has three oxygen, while sulfate has four. So we need to add a water molecule on the left side to balance the oxygen. And thereafter, to add two H plus to balance the hydrogen. In the final step, we'll be balancing the charges by adding electrons. So on the left-hand side, the charge is 8H+, plus, so that's plus 8, subtract by 1, that's the charge of your magnet. So therefore, there's actually a charge of plus 7 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, manganese is plus 2, water is neutral. So the right-hand side, the charge is plus 2. So for plus 7 to go to plus 2, we need to add 5 electrons on the left-hand side. In the case of sulfide going to sulfate, the charge are both negative two. However, in the case of sulfide to sulfate, if you look at the left-hand side, water is neutral, sulfide is minus two. So overall charge on the left-hand side is minus two. On the right-hand side, sulfate is minus two. The hydrogen, the two H plus has a charge of plus two. So overall add together is zero. So hence we have to put two electrons on the right-hand side to balance the negative to balance the negative two charge on the left-hand side. With that, we have completed the two half equations. And we will always make the extra step to check that the oxidation state matches the number of electrons that's been added to the left or right. And in this case, it matches. Finally, to get the full equation for the redox reaction, to get the full equation for the redox reaction, we now need to multiply the, the half equations of 1 by 2 and multiply the half equations of 2 by 5 so that the electrons on the left and right, which will end up as 10, would actually cancel away. And by doing that, you end up with the final, you will end up with the full equations as indicated. Bear in mind that in this example, we're looking at solution, which is acidic or aqueous. Let's take a look at the extra step that you need to take if the solution is alkaline. To do that, let's take a look at a new example. In this example, we have nitrite oxidizing to ammonia, while zinc reduces to Zn2+. So again, the same vein, the first step involves the balancing on nitrogen, and in this case, balancing the zinc. In the second step, we will still similarly use water. NO2- has two oxygen, so we'll still add two water molecules to balance the oxygen. And thereafter, we'll then add the H plus, 7H plus to balance the hydrogen. The extra step that needs to be taken when the solution is alkaline is that we need to now neutralize the 7H plus that's added. Because in an alkaline medium, the dominant species should be OH minus and not H plus. So to do that, we have the extra step that 7OH minus is added on the both the right and left. So that the 7H plus plus the 7OH minus will neutralize to give you 7H2O. While the 7OH minus that's added on the right hand side remain as it is. So with that, this will now allow us to end the second step. If you look at the reactions for zinc, going to zinc OH uh, 4 to minus, you'll find that all we need to do is to add 4OH minus. We pick this example because it is important to note that at times, it is better to add OH minus direct if it is easier for you to be able to see. But in the case of nitrite going to ammonia, it is less obvious. So the steps of first adding water followed by H plus and then doing the additional step of neutralizing the H plus with added OH minus is necessary. 
Once step two is done, we'll then check for the charge. In this case, NO2 minus is negative one and seven OH minus is negative seven. So it's only appropriate we add six electrons on the left-hand side. In the case of zinc, to zinc OH four to minus, we'll find that the left-hand side has four negative charge, while zinc OH four to minus has two negative charge. So it's only right that we add two electrons on the right side. So in doing so, we would have completed both the half equations. And finally, to derive the full equations for this redox reaction, we would multiply equation two by three. Equation one can remain to multiply by one so that the six electrons on the right-hand side and the six electrons on the left-hand side could cancel off. And with that, you will end up with the final equations for the redox reactions as depicted. We now like to show you a shortcut where you can quickly derive the mole ratio at which reducing agent reacts with oxidizing agent. So one of the means of uh, doing the shortcut is to leave force data from the data booklet. And we're looking at 4B in the data booklet. So you find that the, uh, the, in the case of manganate reducing to MN2+, you, uh, you realize that the, uh, uh, the half equations is depicted here. The next one is your dichromate, which is a great reducing agent that reduces to Cr3+. You will, find, you will also find halogens that's been reduced to Br- and the half equations is depicted. We will also want to show you the half equations of Fe3 plus going to Fe2 plus. And similarly, you have your sulfate reducing to sulfur dioxide. And this reaction here is your tetrathionide reducing to your thiosulfate. And this is actually a half equations that's used in your idometric titration. Let's take a look at an alternate, alternative method. Say for example, in this reaction, we are trying to derive, we're trying to identify how many moles of sulfide reacts with how many moles of manganate. So the first step is quickly to pull out the information about manganate reducing to Mn2+. This information is presented in the data booklet. And I'll indicate that manganate reduces to Mn2+, and I'll write the equation here to depict that for every single mole of Mn7+, that needs to be reduced, you need five mole of electron. I will then take a look at sulfide oxidizing to sulfate. In this case, we know the oxidizing state of sulfide is plus four and sulfate is plus six. So hence for one mole of sulfide to oxidize to one mole of sulfate, you will need two moles of electron. So a common multiple of five mole and two mole is 10 mole. And if 10 moles of electron need to be transferred from sulfide to sulfate, every one mole of sulfide gives two moles of electron. Therefore, we can conclude we will need five mole of sulfide to give 10 moles of electron. And for magnet to take in 10 moles of electron, we know that every one mole of magnet will take five. Therefore, we will need two moles of magnet to take in the 10 moles of electron. Hence, by using this simple technique, we do away with the need to balance half equations and to quickly arrive at the mole ratio that oxidizing and reducing agent reacts with themselves. So in this case, two moles of magnet reacts with five moles of sulfide. 